You know, when you think of something being strong, you probably think of it being super stiff, right? Unbreakable. But what if I told you the biggest, strongest things we've ever built all share a secret? Their real strength isn't about being rigid. It's about being able to bend. So that leads to this wild question. How on earth can a skyscraper, this giant tower of steel and glass, sway like a full two meters in the wind and not just snap in half? It seems impossible, right? Well, the answer starts on a scale that's almost impossible to imagine. Super, super small. You see, every solid thing around you, a steel beam, a concrete block, whatever, is basically this super organized grid of atoms. And here's the cool part. The bonds holding all those atoms together, you can think of them as millions and millions of tiny invisible springs. And that spring idea, it's not just a cute analogy, seriously. Way back in the 17th century, this brilliant guy named Robert Hooke figured out a really simple rule for this. It's called Hooke's Law. All it says is that the more you pull on a spring, the force, the more it stretches. Simple as that. The more you pull, the harder it pulls back. Okay, so that's the basic science. But how do you use that to build a skyscraper? Well, engineers take that core idea and basically scale it up for the real world. They call it stress and strain. It's pretty much the pro version of Hooke's Law, and it lets them predict exactly how a material is going to bend or deform under any kind of load, which, as you can imagine, is kind of crucial for building, well, anything that you don't want to fall down. So let's follow a piece of material on its journey when you start putting it under load. At first, it's in what we call the elastic region. You can stretch it, and it'll snap right back to its original shape, just like a rubber band. That's the happy place. But if you pull too hard and go past its elastic limit, that's the point of no return. You get what's called plastic deformation. Now, the change is permanent. The perfect example, a paperclip. Once you bend it, it's never going to be perfectly straight again. And this is exactly why choosing the right material is everything. Take steel, for example. It's what we call ductile. It bends and stretches a lot before it breaks, which is great because it gives you a warning that something's wrong. But then you have concrete. It's brittle. It's amazing under compression when you squeeze it. But if you try to pull it apart, it just pff, snaps like a piece of chalk. So what do we do? We combine them. And boom, you get reinforced concrete, which gives you the best of both worlds. Okay, so let's bring this all the way back to that skyscraper we talked about. The Burj Khalifa, right? The tallest building on the planet. Get this, it is designed to sway elastically up to a meter and a half at the very top. That's almost five feet. Its whole shape is engineered to kind of confuse the wind, turning all that massive force into this safe, gentle dance. Or think about the Golden Gate Bridge. It's basically a gigantic steel spring just hanging there in the sky. In super high winds, the main deck can swing side to side by almost 28 feet. That's insane. It's literally built to move, to breathe. It's designed to go with the flow of nature's forces, not just stand there and fight them. So whether it's surviving an earthquake or just shrugging off gale force winds, the big idea is exactly the same. The real secret to incredible strength isn't about being rigid and unmoving. Our greatest structures don't fight the forces of nature. They actually use the power of elasticity to dance with them.